Hi everybody, how's it going? In this video, I want to share with you 11 simple tips and tricks for the AYN Thor. Now, some of these are very basic stuff, so you might already know a lot of them. But hey, maybe there's something you didn't already know that's gonna make your Thor experience just a little bit better. So, let's dive straight into the first tip and check out some options to customize your wallpaper. So, the simplest method is of course to go into the settings, scroll down to wallpaper, and select an image of your choice. You can set different wallpapers for the top and bottom screen, and you can also try to align a single poster on both screens. If you find the bottom screen too cluttered, like I don't need the search bar on 90% of the apps here, you can run a custom launcher app here and tweak it to your preference. For example, I'm running a launcher app called Lynx Launcher here, and I've cleaned everything up with only my media apps docked down here, along with RetroArch in the mix so that I can move Game Boy games down here if I desire. I can still access all my apps with a swipe, so I'm not really missing anything. I've tested many launcher apps, and they all seem to work pretty well, so you can probably pick whichever you like. One slight problem is that, if you press the home button to quit apps, you're back to the stock launcher. But if you just close apps using the task manager, you can maintain this illusion pretty easily. If you notice this little black bar at the bottom, you can remove it by going into the settings, scroll all the way down to system, then in gestures, toggle this to on. This will remove the black bar at the bottom. And if you can't find your launcher app on the bottom screen, you can just search for it on the search bar here. Also, for some reason, I've noticed that the launcher app on the bottom screen drains more battery than it should in sleep mode. So, if you notice increased battery drain overnight, you can check the battery usage statistics to figure out what's going on. We can also make the top screen fancier by using the app Wallpaper Engine to set a dynamic background. On Android, it's completely free and you can directly download an APK from its official website. If you own the Steam version of Wallpaper Engine, you can pair it with your Thor and push your PC wallpapers onto the Thor. Or you could simply import a video or a GIF directly on your Thor. Using dynamic wallpapers within Wallpaper Engine has the added benefit of custom widgets and interactive effects, such as this cool clock widget and the reaction to physical movements. While importing videos is more accessible, since you can easily find a bunch of live wallpapers on Google. And you can crop and edit these videos as you like, so that you can have something like this, where you display a single poster on both screens, but the top screen is also dynamic. If you're interested in this look, I've figured out a simple way to generate these videos and images for you to follow along. First of all, you need a 4K live wallpaper of your choice. So this will be a short MP4 video with a resolution of 3840 by 2160. I found that wallpapers with simple backgrounds and a character in the middle works the best. You can also pick wallpapers where the bottom part is also interesting, so that it also looks good when you're playing games. Next, you'll need FFmpeg. You can check if you have it by launching a terminal and typing in FFmpeg. If it's not found, you can download it from the official website. We'll extract it and go into the bin folder where ffmpeg.exe is located. Copy our 4K wallpaper here, renamed as wallpaper.mp4. Launch a terminal here, type in cmd, press enter, and run these two lines of code. You can find all of these in the description. This will generate the video for our top screen and the image for our bottom screen, and then we can copy them over to the Thor to set them up. Now, if you carry around your Thor a lot in the backpack, you might be worried about the screens getting bent too much on the corners. A simple solution is to use the packaging foam that came with the Thor, and just squeeze it into the Thor when you put it into a bag. Or, if you got the TPU grip, this also works pretty well at supporting the screen's corners. Now, if you play a lot of 3DS games on the go, you might find that when you close the lid while a game is running, the Thor still gets pretty hot in this suspended state, and the battery drops rather quickly. 
This is because, even in sleep mode, the modding emulators like Azahar and Eden are still running in the background, so you might want to quit out of them before suspending the device. I tested the battery drain, and Azahar drains about 20% of the battery overnight, while Melendias and RetroArch running MGBA only drains about 2-3%. to so for those emulators, you can safely use the sleep and resume function. But for something like Azahar and Eden, I would save and quit before suspending the device. If you want a dedicated keyboard on the bottom screen to prevent the on-screen keyboard from hogging up the top screen, you can do this by clicking this pin icon at the corner of the on-screen keyboard and select pin on the bottom screen. This way, the on-screen keyboard will always pop up on the bottom screen, leaving the entire top screen unobstructed. Now, if you ever wondered what the lock symbol meant in the task manager, this indicates whether your app can be terminated by swiping up. So it's like you've locked in the app to have it there all the time. And maybe for some of you guys out there, it's pretty obvious how to lock or unlock apps, but at least for me, it took me quite a little while to figure this out. So you pull the app down and then release it to lock or unlock the app. For instance, you can have your front end locked in. Then you can safely click clear all to clear all the apps but your front end. Now, if you switched off the floating icon the first time you set up your device because you find this white bar distracting, then you might have missed this feature. So you can set up per app settings in this side menu. Like you can choose your gamepad style, set the performance mode, and the fan control policy. And you only need to set this up once, and then you can turn the floating icon off and everything still persists. So for example, I've set the global power plan to be standard and turned the fan off. And for something easy to run like Melon DS, I've set the fan to quiet. And for Eden, I've set it to high performance with the sports fan profile. This way, it just automatically switches between the different modes. I've also set the controller to be Xbox style in Artemis and GameHub, so everything is seamless between PC games and emulated Nintendo games. Speaking of per app profiles, you might also want different screen layouts for different DS games. For example, for Pokemon games, I like to make the top screen as large as possible. But for certain dual screen games, such as Contra 4, I would want the two screens to be the same size. Unfortunately, in the current version of Melon DS, her game layout is not supported, so you'll have to manually switch the layout in the settings every time you need a different layout. But there's a simple workaround. So you can install the mainline and nightly version of Melon DS side by side. For example, you can configure the mainline version of Melon DS to display a maxed out top screen, and configure the nightly version to display the two screens with the same size. Then, in your front end, you can set DS games to be launched by the mainline version by default, and for games like Contra, you can override the default settings and launch it using the nightly version of Melon DS. So you only have to set it up once, and after that, the correct screen layouts will be automatically loaded. If you don't want to use the nightly version because maybe you're worried about bugs, you can also change the name of Melon DS, for example, by building it yourself or hacking it with an APK editor. Then, you can install two versions of the same Melon DS build alongside each other. If you use Drastic, this is already a built-in feature. So before you launch a game, you want to go into the video settings, set external display mode to correct aspect ratio, and external display screen to bottom screen, and external display border to 10%. Then, you want to go into general settings, and set the default layout to be landscape aspect. Be sure to exit drastic with the exit button, or the settings might not save. When you run a game, this will be the default layout, and you can go into the game menu, scroll down to edit screens, pick landscape aspect, resize the screens as you like, and then click save for current game. So then your special layout will only be loaded for this game, and every other game will use the default layout. If you want to set up a background image in Drastic, you might find that Drastic only reads files from the app's internal storage, which you don't have access to. 
The solution is to go to the settings, then general settings, scroll all the way to the bottom and change the system directory to a scoped storage folder. And then you can pick a folder and put your background image there. This also has the added benefit where your save files will also be in this folder, so you can easily access them. And in MelonDS, you can specify the location of your save files. So if you pick the drastic save file location, you can use both emulators at the same time while sharing all the save files. You just have to make sure that in advanced settings in drastic, you've set use raw save format to on. While MelonDS is the newer emulator with super high resolution rendering available, Drastic has been around for a long time, so bugs are more well known, and you have way more options for shaders. So you might want to try both emulators out. For Azahar, if you set up the dual screens and was wondering what graphics settings to change, here are some settings that you might want to look at first before googling the best settings for a specific game. So for the graphics API, I would set it to be Vulkan by default. It's more efficient and you get to use the turnip drivers. But it might have graphical glitches in some games, usually in the form of weird geometry like additional lines, where you have to switch back to OpenGL. Of course, switching this setting is tedious and you can't even change this when a game is running. So we can also apply the install two instances trick here. For example, we could install Azahar Plus alongside Azahar and set it to use OpenGL and then we can set the few games that need OpenGL to use Azahar Plus in our launcher. Then there's Disable Right Eye Render, which is disabled by default because it might cause flickers in certain games. I would change this to on first, so if it does improve performance, it does it in the background and if there were flickers, You'd notice it and you can turn this back off. Accurate multiplication here fixes graphical bugs in some games. For example, in Pokemon X, some blue Pokemon will be white if this is not enabled. However, on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, this is also fixed with the newest turnip driver. So if you see texture bugs, I would try the turnip drivers first before turning on accurate multiplication, which has a pretty huge performance overhead. And then there's asynchronous shader compilation here. What this is supposed to do is that you will have less stutter in exchange for graphical glitches. But in my experience, it's more like a little bit less stuttery, but many more graphical glitches. So I would set this to off and just tank through the stutters. There's also a bug in the current Azahar build with shader caches. So shader compilation stutters should only happen once you know, when you encounter a certain graphical effect for the first time. After a shader is compiled, it should be cached in your system. So unless you reinstall Azahar or change your drivers or the graphics API, the stutter should no longer happen. But Azahar doesn't seem to update the shader cache if you close the emulator directly in Android. So you might want to make it a habit to use close game in the side menu here to close the game so that you don't have to sit through the same shader compilation stutter over and over again. Also, before you start playing your favorite 3DS game, you might want to do a quick Google search for high resolution texture packs, because a lot of 3DS games have custom made texture packs out there. Some of them are redrawn by enthusiastic artists, and some of them are AI upscaled, but all of them look better than the original low res textures. To enable custom textures, you want to go to the graphics settings and enable custom textures here. Then you can long press on a game, click the icon here, and click open textures folder. And this is where you should put your custom textures. Just follow the instructions for the texture packs you downloaded. And now your 3DS games will truly be in high resolution. If you found the gyro controls too laggy in Azahar or other apps, you can improve the situation by using the app Hyper IMU. It's a free app you can get on the Google Play Store. When you first launch it, you can safely disable location permissions. Then in the sensors list, enable everything and click the tick here. Then in the settings, change sampling rate to something small, like 5. Then you can press the little green dot in the middle to start the service. It does increase power draw a little bit, 
So you might want to start it manually before playing a game using Gyro instead of having it run all the time in the background. As you can see, there's a pretty night and day difference in terms of Gyro input lag. Hyper IMU might stop randomly though because of Android killing it off in the background. And there are also quite a few bugs in this app as well as ads, so you'll have to decide for yourself if this is worth it. Now the Thor has pretty average audio quality and there's no equalizer, so you can't tweak the audio. But there's this app, originally developed for the Odin 2 portal, that also works on the Thor. So after you install this, go to Tweaks and you can install James DSP here. After the installation is complete, go back to O2P Tweaks and enable James DSP. And then you can launch James DSP and start tweaking the audio. I've tested this on my base Thor and the equalizer works great. And unlike the rootless version of James DSP, it also works in apps like Chrome. However, if you have the light version of the Thor that has the Snapdragon 865, this might not work for you. Okay, now I have two bonus tips for you. And it's bonus because I don't really think it's that helpful. Anyways, in case you didn't already know, you can set up a 4G swap file in the Thor settings. This is like virtual RAM in Windows, so if you run out of RAM, the system will use some of the internal storage as RAM instead of just crashing out. In my personal experience though, I didn't really find it that helpful for RAM intensive applications like Switch games. There were as many crashes, but sometimes the task manager also gets stuttery, so I just keep this to off. You can also run a script here as root. Now you want to make sure that you know what you're doing because this can break your device if you ran an unfortunate script. I find this most useful for accessing the internal storage. For example, it allows you to back up all your Switch saves all at once, instead of doing it one by one in the emulator. So that's all the tips and tricks I have to share. Do you have other interesting tips for the Thor? Please share with us in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video.